you're welcome to my YouTube channel, Chemistry Explained. I'm Science Joseph, your teacher. Today, we are going to talk about writing ionic equations. And before we start this lesson, I request that you subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep me going. And also like the video, just tap there below this video, knock on the subscribe button, and also like the video. Now let us start. Today we are talking about how do you write an ionic equation. Some students came to me and said, make a video how to write ionic equations. So we don't know how to write ionic equations. I was tempted to come and make this video for you so that you can learn. Now let us start. Step one, write a well-balanced molecular equation a molecular equation is what you actually call a chemical equation. Reactions are represented basically by two equations, a word equation and a molecular equation or a chemical equation. Right away, first up, write a well balanced molecular equation. This equation involves symbols and chemical formula. Break down the molecular equation into, into ions, into corrective act, into ions. Then cancel the spectator ions. Spectator ions are ions which do not take part in a chemical reaction but remain in the same form on the reactant side and on the product side. So when you see ions which have the same symbols on both sides, same charges on both sides, reactants, products, cancel them. Those are called spectator ions. They just watch the reaction as other species that are reacting. Write the final equation. After removing spectators, now write what's remaining. Let's look at some rules here. Students are always confused. What should I ionize? Now, some few rules are here. Do not ionize solid products. If the product formed is a solid, such as an insoluble salt, don't ionize it. But some Salts in the reactants can ionize and we give them a state of aqueous because we have ionized it. Don't ionize gases, don't ionize water because these are molecules. Then do not ionize metals and metal oxides, whether in the product side or reactant side. Take note of this. Now let us go into the first example. I request that you watch this video to the end so that you learn very, very well. By the end of this video, you should be writing any form of ionic equation. Right away, let us start with the first reaction. So we are looking at a reaction between metals and dilute acids. Now, we, we know if you get a metal and you add an acid, you actually get a salt plus hydrogen gas. I request that you check on my, my video for writing chemical equations in the same channel here. Now, let's take an example of magnesium metal reacting with dilute hydrochloric acid. So magnesium metal is Mg, magnesium is Mg. So this is my molecular equation I'm writing, say solid plus dilute hydrochloric acid, it's a solution. It has water, that's why you put up the acid there. Yeah? So it, salts from hydrochloric acid are called chloride. So we shall see magnesium chloride here. Yeah. Magnesium chloride, we know the balance of magnesium is two, chloride is one, then plus hydrogen, gas right away. So we say that step to break the molecular equation into ions. After writing the molecular equation, we first have to balance it. We need the two here. We shall make another video now to balance it. So let's break into ions here. We say do not ionize the metal so magnesium remains. We can ionize this acid. There is a two here, so this two. The balance of hydrogen is one. It lies on the, metal, on the side of metals, so we are giving it a positive charge. The balance of the chloride is one. 
being that say non-metal will give it a negative charge, but this two affects it, so it will be to here. Giving us the side, this being a solution, we are going to analyze it. Magnesium has a valence of two, so being a metal, it give it a positive charge, aqueous state, then plus chlor chloride, we put these two behind here, so we give it a negative being a non-metal, don't ionize a gas, so hydrogen gas remains exactly like that. Put those rules in at your attention very much. Let's put the equation. Some things are similar on both sides. We said ions that look the same are called spectator ions, so cancel this spectator ion, cancel this one. This is a solid, this is an ion, so we don't cancel those. We also, also cancel this, so the final equation will have this this and finally this and that. So right away, let me just punch in the final equation here. Hope you follow that. The final equation now will be magnesium plus hydrogen ions, they were two, giving us magnesium two ions appears plus hydrogen gas. This is what we call the ionic equation for metals and acids. Let's write away look at example two. Now in the example two, we are looking at the reaction between the bases and acids. Remember, bases are divided into two. We have metal oxides and also we have metal hydroxides. Let's first jump into metal hydroxides. So every base plus acid we receive two things. We receive the salt plus water. So let's take an example. Sodium hydroxide here. So I'm using a hydroxide first. Sodium hydroxide is that. Then plus sulfuric acid dilute. It's a solution. So put up here. We get a salt. The salt is going to be called magnesium. Sodium sulfate rather. So sodium sulfate. Exchange valences properly plus water right away there. Now let's first balance it. We just need the two here and the two right away there. Let's break it into ions. We say you break any soluble salt, so this is an soluble compound. So sodium being a metal, you give it a charge of plus one, so has a valence of one. Hydroxide also has a valence of one, standing for a radical. Then plus sulfuric acid has hydrogen, so we can't bring that hydrogen valence one. Sulfate valence two, being a radical, we give it a negative. So this we have sodium also. Don't put a two in the front, you put it behind the iron. Plus sulfate ions. Then right away plus water. Now we see. Now cancel spectator ions, we have sodium cancelling right away there. Then we have cancer sulfate cancelling, so we end up with hydroxide ions plus two hydrogen ions giving us two water. But there is a common factor, so divide all through by two, so you will end up with this as your final equation, your final ionic equation is right away that. Now, before I go to it, the, la, the next example, we say the bases are either metal oxide, so hydroxide, so let me use a metal oxide here and you also learn how to use that. So I'll change this, maybe to magnesium oxide. I hope you have watched this clearly and you've understood. So let's have this change into magnesium oxide here. So say base. So what we receive this way to be magnesium sulfate. Magnesium has a valence of two, two and the sulfate two, so it cancels down to remaining like this. So plus water, so that's the equation. Now let's look at, there is a rule we say, do not ionize a metal oxide. If you ionize it, the equation is going to be unpractical. It will yield what we cannot obtain chemically. So we maintain the metal oxide as this. So magnesium oxide, don't ionize it. So you don't ionize oxides and metals. 
they ionize this, so the two hydrogen ions, hydrogen has a valence of one, being a metal, it gives it a positive, it lies on the metal side, though it's not a metal. Then plus sulfate, valence of two, being a radical, you give it a negative. Also, this one we ionize being a solvent salt, so ionize it. Then sulfate, we put aqueous because it's a solvent salt. If it's an insoluble salt, we put a solid and we don't ionize it. So we get right away this plus water. Now let's count the spectator and similar ions. We can see sulfate being similar to this one. So right away our final equation will have a metal oxide plus two hydrogen ions, giving us magnesium ions, which is a colorless solution, plus water. Yeah, this is the final ionic equation for this reaction of magnesium plus sulfate acid. Let's jump into the next example here. We have a reaction between metal carbonate and an acid. A metal carbonate, let's take an example, probably we can call in Let's take an example right now with, uh, say, uh, zinc carbonate. Let's take an example. Zinc carbonate is, we say all carbonates are not solo salts, so zinc carbonate plus right away. Let's use hydrofluoric acid, dilute, so we put aqueous here. Yeah. We saw in the previous video that you receive three things. So the first thing is a salt, zinc chloride, salts of hydrochloric acid are called the chlorides. Then you also have carbon dioxide gas. Then we have the water right now. So you just run here and balance with the two. You'll watch my video on balancing equations about three methods explained very well. Uh, let me remove all this. Then we shall look at it. Lastly, let's ionize this compound. We ionize a carbonate here. So when we ionize it, we use aqueous states because ions do not exist in solid form. So we have that. Then if it was a solid and it's on the product side, you don't ionize it. Hope you remark that. So we put to ionize this acid here. Plus to chloride ions. So ionize this being a solvent salt, ionize it, we get it. Then don't ionize the gas, neither don't ionize the water, the liquid. Let's cancel spectators. We have this canceling with that right away. We have the chloride, the canceling with chloride. So we jump into the final point being a carbonate, ions, aqueous, and put them in aqueous form, plus two hydrogen ions. Then yielding to us the final products, carbon dioxide gas and water. In fact, all carbonates always use this equation, whether in solid form or it's a soluble carbonate. Now let's look at the last example right away. We'll put it just up here above this. Looking at precipitation reaction, a reaction between two soluble salts to produce one insoluble. Now let me pick my last example. Precipitation reaction. Reaction between two soluble salts. Reaction between two soluble salts. Let me pick salts that will give me a solid product. Maybe the two nitrates. I hope you not come up with chemical formulas. If you are not sure, check on my similar videos. Then let's take an example of maybe sodium sulfate. Both salts are soluble. You know, lead salts, only nitrates, and only nitrates, most of the lead salts are insoluble, such as the chlorides, uh, sulfates, carbonates are all insoluble. So we receive, this is a precipitation reaction, we just exchange parts. Lead goes with the sulfate because a positive ion goes with the negative ion, then a positive ion goes with the negative ion. So it's allowed to lead to sulfate. Lead balance the sulfate balance the so the formula remains. It's lead sulfate is an insoluble salt, so go and check on solubility. 
for you to be able to come up with certain states and the final in the final product. So we receive sodium sulfate, sodium nitrate, sodium balance one, nitrate balance one, so we remain with that formula, one one, so the formula remains, we just balance the equation right away there. So let's ionize it. Lead to ions, balance is two, being a metal. So nitrate, we put a two this way, don't put a two in front. Has a balance of one being a radical, you give it a negative. So sodium being a metal, also give it a positive charge. Sulfate, yeah. Don't ionize this insoluble salt, so we receive it as this, plus two sodium ions, then plus two nitrate ions right away there. So you cancel spectator ions, we have this canceling with that, we have this canceling with that. So we remain with spectator ions, we said ions which remain in the same form on both the reactant side and the product side. So we receive this, uh, giving us the two cell. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Those who are watching for the first time, please endeavor to subscribe. Kindly do it to help me build this channel. Thank you, we meet next time in the next presentation. I remain your teacher, Science Joseph.